All right, welcome to my master, whatever you call this thing, master bathroom, master bedroom, master closet. And this pile of stuff uh, came in on a truck the other day. I'll show you what it, came, what it looked like. And uh, we made about 800 trips into this giant house of carrying all the stuff in place. Uh, but what I have here is a closet organization system that I found at the International Builders Show, which I wasn't really looking for closets. Uh, the problem I have with closet systems is one, they're junk. Two, they're, I hate this term, but if there's ever a term overpriced, this would be one of them. My wager is that this stuff doesn't cost that much. Uh, and so this, the problem with this house is I'm only gonna be here temporarily and uh, you know while I build the house down the street and I would wager what we're about to do here would cost sixty or seventy thousand dollars to do that's why I wanted to find some better less marked up I don't need goofy installers and weird designers uh, and then uh, then you know when I when I saw this stuff at the show I'm like wow I fell in love with how it looks it's still veneered press board or particle board or MDF or whatever the heck the core is. So it's still like a, a veneered finish or a melamine type finish. Uh, but there's a few things we'll show you why it, it lo certainly looked better on the display. Uh, and I've already done one little area here in the house. It's, it's like, it's the, I, the best of the closet systems I found. Uh, nobody really makes real wood unless you had a cabinet guy come and do it. Uh, and so, what I'm thinking is that, well, maybe I can bring this to you uh, and uh, show you how to do this. And I'm really confident after just kind of organizing things. And, 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 and I'm, uh, the only thing I'm worried about is how to align the drawers, like if you could do that. Uh, but most of this closet organization stuff, we can help you design it, I'm certain. And then, um, and then yeah, I'm sure you can install it. I'm gonna show you how easy this is to do. So we're gonna take you through the process here today. Uh, I did several different colors. Uh, I don't know where we'll get to. We'll, we'll just do the master today and do another video in the other closets, but I did several different colors in the house here. And uh, we're gonna set it up and see how it goes and then answer the question, could this be something that you could do on your own or at least buy it and then hire some handy person to come and do it for you? And I think the answer is gonna be yes. So let's get started. So here's how the closets come. I had them put them here outside of the garage. They come on pallets, and then you enroll your family, unload it. One little piece at a time. Lots of pieces, Shelly. Oh you gonna be excited for this, or are you? Yes. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, something that's really encouraging after the discouraging part of carrying all the stuff into the house that's really heavy, that one inch thick means that each one of these panels weighs a ton. Uh, I tried this here. Uh, I don't wanna show you what it looks like completely. It'll sort of ruin the video, but um, I thought I would do this here. It looks terrible here, so we're gonna pull this out and do something different. But I built this in about 20 minutes uh, on the weekend just to kind of see how the stuff goes. That was before I even had the instructions. So you saw the giant pile of stuff so the question is, what the heck do you do with all of that? Like it would be hard to organize, especially if you're doing a whole house. Uh, and so Michael from uh, Adornis, which is the, the main cabinet manufacturer, um, they, they sent me this with a couple of tips talking about install the corners first, then lay out the stuff, which I'll show you, which we already did. And then uh, it talks about um, which cam locks are which. But then he sent me a full instruction suite so, which I just read through briefly and it tells you what you need, tells you the different parts and pieces. So this is good because it tells you the nomenclature of what's a Rathix 20, uh, what's, an, what's, a, what's an IX or 1X Connect. So the black ones are the Connects and the, the, the silver ones, the gray ones are the, are the Rathix 20s, which, which they, uh, which they uh, refer to in all the, all the documentation. Um, but then it shows you the directions exactly how to do this, you know, what part and piece to go through. So I read through this last night on how to put all this stuff together. But then they also send you, which I printed out, a document that 
shows you all the numbers. And so all of these things are numbered one through whatever. And so this is Michelle's closet. So the way that I designed it, so what we would do is we'd have Sean and Kyle and the team uh, design it for you. Uh, so they designed it for me. I, I did it with them. And then I placed the order, but I designed it as Michelle's side of the closet, Matt's side of the closet. Kate's closet, Ryan's closet, guest room closet. And so this is Michelle's side of the closet. And so I separated my side from her side to make it a little bit easier. And then they number everything. So everything's numbered from one to 16 or one to 19 in this section of the closet. Uh, and so the beauty is I went through that big pile of stuff and then I've laid it out in here where you'll notice this stuff here so two, four, six, two, four, six. So you have the toe kicks and then the back pieces. And then the tall pieces are one, three, five, and seven. So here's three, here's five. So I got one, three, five, and seven all sitting here ready to go. Uh, and then you have your shelves, which are also denoted two, four, six. Nice and easy, nice and laid out perfectly. So tell me you couldn't figure this out. And then the back pieces. So the backs are optional, but two, four, six. So obviously I think in a closet, first thing you want to do is prep it. So get all your crap out of here, which we did. And then we're taking the racks out, which we're doing now. We're going to start on what I think is the simplest section. And then what we were trying to decide to do uh, is to, should I take the baseboard out or should we put a, um, what do we call that thing? A cleat across. And uh, because each section has a, you know, they'll have three back pieces that'll span studs, this is your nailer board, it even says here on the, little, on the little document. So this is section four, nailer. Uh, and then we'll put the cam locks in place. And so this will sit against the wall, but with a baseboard, um, it would be, you know, out here, out half an inch. And so I think what we're going to do is we're going to pop the baseboards off and, uh, I need to measure, I need to go look at the dimensions measure. I think, I think I designed it with the side baseboards staying in place. Uh, so I think what we'll probably do here is we'll pop the back baseboard off so that way we can go flush against the wall. So for each section, so this is Michelle's section. They, you know, they put the nomenclature on there so we know what we have. And then each one, so Michelle's side of the closet, and it lists out all the parts and pieces, how many. Um, and so these are for the shelves, and it says, you know, four shelves in the box. These are for toe kicks and for the back pieces. So it says four toe kicks and stretchers. I'm not sure what stretchers are, but I think stretchers are the, um, the, uh, the nailers. And then I bought some of these hanger things, which we'll do. And then we have screws. So it has the screws that we use for all the shelving and everything for all the parts and pieces for the cam locks. And then it has the regular shelf holders. We have some hardware. We have some L brackets, which I don't think we're really gonna need the L brackets, but so this is everything we need to put the three sections together on Michelle's side of the closet. So before I chop this baseboard off, I wanted to be sure that these didn't like go like this, right? Where I've spaced it out. So they sit flush. So the way it works is you have a cam, you have a cam lock and a cam. I guess you'd call it that screw in a cam and then this will lock in place and it's flush across the back so we do need to both pull the baseboard off. So I knew this was, uh, was meant to be, was these stickers peel right off. <laughs> Do you imagine trying to pull all these stickers off if they didn't come off? 
Yeah, so it's going to be like, so, so the 88, we have 88 and three quarters, but the cabinet array is 84. So if we shift it this way, you won't see the gap over here, and no one's going to look over there. Yeah. Or we'll be that in one piece of baseboard. Actually, I probably want the four foot level, the line. You know, normally this stuff is 12 inches deep. So on, on this we can do, you can do 18 or, or um, 14. They don't even do 12 inches. So not only is it one inch thick, it's deeper. It's, deeper. it's awesome. You could do, they do custom sizes if you need it. You gotta go up all the uprights to these, right? And, Correct. And toe kicks. Correct, so number three. So we'll start on the left side since we're gonna butt this up to the edge. Rathix bolt, so there's a whole box of them. So these have a threaded section and then like a little stud section and that's what your cam lock grabs onto. And so this is the toe kick pre-drilled pre location. We need to do it, we need to do it in the bottom shelf location too, right here. And we need to do it on the, the back, the nailer section. So nailer, bottom, toe kick. These other holes will be for the shelves, but I gotta look at the document that tells you some of the shelves are just hung, some of the shelves are locked in. I think on these, all the shelves are locked in. All right, so here's our section, right? So from here, one through seven, one through seven. So if, if it was a shelf that wasn't locked in, then it would be red. So all, Mike, all these shelves are locked in, so we need one of those those graphic screws, so the ones you're putting in, we're gonna put in all of the holes. Okay. Except for... The rods. I'm gonna figure out what the rods need. Screw hole, right? Yep. One screw. No screws or one screw? It's not pre-drilled for a screw. No, it just said so. something like that. Well, because the rod holds them in. Oh yeah, so yeah, there is no screw necessary. Yeah, got it. So, we put the black. Black for the toe kick and the silver for the other, or are they all black? Huh? Correct. The toe kick, no, these are all black. Oh. Shelves get the gray. And the turns pulls it in place. lock because it pulls it yep. up against. Okay. Gosh, this is so easy. It's awesome. You're going to pay someone $20,000 to do this? Then we do bottom shelf. All right, so I just basically held the level up here, plumbed it, and you see my sinking some anchors in there.
for all of Michelle's tchotchkes in here. We got some extra, extra strength for all my Jordans. All right, so now next is the back. So that piece in there slides upward. This backer is a really expensive option. This like adds like 25% of the cost of the cabinets. Here you uh, hold that up, I'm gonna get up there. Make this here. Yeah, I mean, like every closet, you have to kind of, and they're always trying to cut in, and yeah, yeah. Can I see what it looks like? There you go. Whoa. Well, Sharkster smells blood, blood yeah, in the water. Yes. Yeah. The little doodle, yeah, he's totally doodle shark. To his knee. Doodle shark. Chasey, chasey, Imagine what they can smell. I know, right? They, he can even smell probably in your blood what, you're, <laughs> what you had. If you yeah. had sweets lately or yeah. not. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that's a guarantee. Awesome. All right, so we put the bottom shelf on next. Yes. What you doing, buddy? Okay, number this no. one here. But not the front. The front just sits. Yeah, well, you, yeah there's no way to tighten it. Yeah. So, but it does still get the cam locks, right? Correct. Like I was thinking we were gonna have to like L bracket this piece. Cause when I built the one in the bathroom, I didn't put the, I didn't put the back pieces in those the nailer boards, which tie the whole thing together. No, All right, so, the be so what you do is put the, put that in, but flip it up. So you tighten the backs. What well, I'm saying, flip, flip it up. Flip the front up toward the back, tighten the backs. How you, I don't think you can. Yeah. Because how you can do that? Because it, it doesn't want to come up. It's yeah. The, well, I mean, that's what they showed in the direction, but it really doesn't matter. I mean, it's not going anywhere. I mean, you can barely get your hand there. It so it has you fl flipping it all the way back. But I don't want to scratch the. I feel like I'm going to break something. Because it's 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 trying to go over center on this high, you know, the high point here. Yeah. I, mean, I guess you could with a shorty screwdriver, you could. Well, the way they show it on the thing is you have it flipped all the way vertical, and uh, you tighten the two forward. backs, and then the to the fronts just don't get tightened. Okay. But I don't I don't want to scratch up the whole inside of the thing. Okay. Yeah, screw it. On the on this is a double hang so on the double hang all of these get the, the uh, screw the screw he's just learning All people need a golden doodle watchdog. Yeah, so here's how it works. So it slides down on there like that. So that means these things sit in here. So you could secure it if you wanted to, because it is there's a little countersunk hole there, but I don't see why you would need to. The bar's gonna hold it in. Yeah. So then this on like this. Nice. Sick. Aphala too. Us, even two dumbos like us can do this in minutes, Mike.
can have camera Mike and Matt can do this one. The problem is the hang, the hanging sections are usually make custom length because you can make those whatever you want. Right. So a lot of my hanging sections are odd. Yeah. Yeah, those backs make it so finished. Mm hmm Uh oh. Ooh, okay. You got, you got about an inch. All right. An inch in the corner. <laughs> okay. And you're good. Well, because that thing we could notch that baseboard out if we had to, but we don't have to. Yeah. Better not to. That's how they had a display at the International Builder Show. They'd uh, router in it. Router this all out. It'd be a lot of work there. You'd have a lot of um, a lot of wiring. You'd have to run each one of those. So like these, like this one here, this one here, these double hangs. These can be made whatever length you want, up to like a certain like like ridiculous width. So you can you know they can make these. Actually, I think these might be capped at 36. But no, I think you can do these bigger. So you can do, but like the hamper, are like a certain size. The drawers are a certain size. You have certain options. We'll go through all that when we do our first design on camera. 
We got a, we're gonna have to cut this, it's a little bit long. But we got a, you know, we got a long hang, shoes, hamper, drawers. The drawers are what I'm excited. The drawers are gonna be after lunch. Are these labeled, which one's which? Too, between the shelf and the to degrease it after it. Sweet. Oh, the poles hold it tight like this. So yeah. Use the dangerous. dividers and things. I don't know how. You can divide your undies, Matt's undies and color coordinated. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. You guys give me a hard time, but you know, everybody gets the benefit from this. That's a fact. <laughs> I don't give you a hard time. I love it. <laughs> it's fantastic. So it goes up underneath here. Let's see what it's grabbing over. That's what it shows. It's good because I had I tried looking at it and I had no idea what they were talking about. I wasn't sure. So. Hooks underneath this material like that. You find them. I don't know. Like that. Then you slide these in. Oh great. You're supposed to put them in beforehand. We are Matt. You're gonna have to detach it. We got a little carry away. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it though. These things are awesome. You want Back when having this being this is deeper, is it not? No. Is that about far enough for you? I think so. You can come forward as many holes as you want up to, I guess, up to that third there. Yeah. So you got about an inch of wiggle room. Dandy little, little bag of ruse here, a bag of tricks. You know, like this. That's, that's pretty. pretty slick. Slick. That's yeah. That's, that's real nice. This is real nice. Although well, we have this filled up in like a couple hours. <laughs> yeah, half a day of. That is awesome. So 20, 21, 22, 23. So the, like the 21s are everything in the middle here. So the back piece, mm -hmm. the nail boards, there's 23, 23, and there will be a 23 back piece. And then the 20 is one of the uprights, which are right there. So there's number 20 or number you know, 30 upright. Mm -hmm. Did you cut the baseboard at all? Or? Nope, no cuts. Everything's pre-cut, everything's pre-drilled, everything has holes installed this so all this stuff so you can see how it goes together so the back piece so you put the uprights together have bloom um, and they have Solice soft closed drawer glides you know it's it's legit like this is the shoe shelf so like these hanging sections, you can make whatever size you need. So this is how you fill in, you know, so these can be wider. They, they can go up to, I think, 59 inches wide. This has 
So the, the, this is the cam shelf here. So this is the locked on shelf. This is a locked on, locked on. The bottom is locked on, but then the middles are, you know, are just, you know, regular mm -hmm. shelves. This is locked. So you can see here's how the, yep. the cam works. All right, we have some problems here. What the issue is, is that we have block wall and interior wall. And so this jank house is not very square. And so we were good. We were able to kind of force this one together, but because we have the drawers coming in here, we really need this square. to be square. Uh, and so I don't know what Mike's playing in here, but he's gonna do something to fix it. So what you should, what we should do, and we end up doing this, gonna take the whole thing apart, but we should, you should shim the, the, the low point because the high point, the high point of the wall, so the, the picture of the wall is kind of coming out like this. This is wonky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tops, top pieces in, and then the intermediate shelf in the middle, and then that'll hold everything square and nice and lined. Then we'll screw everything to the wall, and then pull the center shelves out, and slide the back panels in, and then put it back together. <laughs> Show them the ways. We're scaring them off right now, Mike. We're scaring them away. I was in, but now I'm not. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Oh boy. The directions were showing that we had to drill a hole where that little hole is, but it seems like it's already there. It's already there. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. And the drawer glides, these are soft clothes. They're All right, so this is a little bit different than the other pieces. So the corners get a extra little six inch bump out, a little six inch toe kick here. So this one is really sweet. So this is gonna go under the window over there. So Michelle has some more drawers, uh, but it's put together a little bit differently in that the top, so it has a top just like the others, bottom just like the others, and I gotta go find, there's a toe kick somewhere as well for this. Uh, but the back piece, so there's a top that I guess we will screw on and the back piece here is solid. So this is a full one inch thick back, which makes the whole thing super, super solid. It's one and a half inch screws. That sucker is solid, like really solid. <laughs> That's awesome. Chase is right in the middle of the action as usual. One of each of these. Yep. One, one of each of these. Do you already have those in there? No. So you got a left and a right. Yep. You got a left and a right hinge. Yep. We need some little screws. So what you need, you need number four by five eighths. Pre-drill number here. Don't have to go very deep. So the drawers just went together, the way they go together. No adjusting. No, nope, they're doweled. Put a little wood glue on the dowel like we showed. Slide the center thing into the slot. Drill these pilot holes. Put the little latches on. Done. So then, that thing just slides into place. Nice and easy. Just like your normal kitchen cabinet sliders, soft close. Boom. Oh, 
All right, you're right. That was easy. Glue it. Yep. Let it sit. Screw the things on right in the corners. Screw the other things on using the furthest forward holes. I mean, it only goes in one. Only one hole fits, so you can't you can't mess that up. Back. Yeah, you can't mess that up. So get it all the way back as far as it'll go, and have the holes yeah, line up. These go on, they flush out. So and they're all identical. Yeah. Well, actually, the grains. Think that's what they have going yep. on? Yep, flip it over and put the stickers in the front. You think they made them that way? I bet you they did. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So that's C. That's D. Yeah, they sure did. Look at that. Uh -huh. They cut it from a full sheet. They did. That's pretty cool. See? That really gets me going there, Mikey. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, yeah. Sure enough, that is exactly what I did. I can't believe he's, we're using these D-Waltz. I'm about to put black tape over them. Cardboard thingy. Nice. Things always go faster once you figure it out the first time. All right, here's where we're at. Status update. So we're in the morning of day three, and I've got all of this in. It's not as tight as it looks on camera. I did a darn good job designing this. Yeah, we'll capture some better footage when Michael Wobble comes back here. He'll capture it, but I wanted to show you what we're doing here. We're gonna put some belt racks in and some tie rack, a tie rack, and then some towel hangers. So apparently there are two different types of belt holders. There's a right open and a left open. I wonder if you could just flip them around. I don't think you can. I don't think so either. So you spec these after the fact. They don't pre-drill these, so you have to just, you know, drill, just drill a little hole and piece of cake. Let's show the people. I'm doing it for the people, Mike. Yep, all for the people. Yeah, so this thing slides out. Slow tab down. That releases this part of the rail. This is the part you screw to the, to the upright. All right, so that's a wrap on the, uh, the Mormon master closet. A couple of things this uh, made me realize that I think the closets need to be bigger in our new you know, house that we're building, they're gonna build down the street. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, and then secondly, I wanna have more, more of this. It's, it's so good. So Michelle's side, everything turned out great. Uh, my door pulls will be here tomorrow. So I, I did uh, nine inch black drawer hardware. This is making me want to order some black. So I'm going to fight for us, you know, for, for when we make this, whatever I name it, but it's likely going to be private labeled. It's, it's, it's that good where I'm going to private label it. Um, you know, this again, this is a wholesale uh, cabinet manufacturer. And so they were talking, they would prefer me to just create my own brand around it and they'll, you know, build it and supply it for us. But uh, I would like to have, you know, black, 
instead of this weird rose gold. And I looked at uh, Hefala that makes this stuff. Hefala does, you know, does make this stuff in black too. So we'll probably do that. Um, the shoe shelf is awesome. I, I think this was a good move in that they do make a shelf where it's turned at like a 30 degree angle with a little shoe. Um, it's like a, like a little metal um, rail. But the problem is you get like four less shelves when you do that, it takes up so much more space. So I think this is the way to go, even though it doesn't look as pretty. Now, if you had a giant, giant closet, maybe you'd do that instead. <coughs> and the, the long hang is great. This thing was a surprise as well. Uh, what I'm thinking is that uh, we would design some of these for islands for people and then you put like a granite top on it. But I mean, normally you would think like if this was your normal, you know, a particle board, um, you know, closet made or whatever, you know, major brand, normal brand, uh, this would be totally flimsy junk. Uh, and, and this turned out actually really, really well. So I'm really pleased with how this, how this ended up. Um, let's see what Michelle's got in here. Let's show her shorts. She probably wouldn't want me showing the other stuff, <clears throat> but the, uh, the drawers, uh, the, the bloom glides are awesome. Nice soft clothes. I like how they did the, uh, the, whatever the laminate is or the material that they put on the, again, it's just, it's all particle board. There, there is no, there's only one company I found that makes a real wood solution, but it's not very modular. There's not a lot of options. At least certainly not as many options that this setup has. And then putting in the, you know, like the belt hangers and stuff like that is pretty cool. And the, and the towel hanger, or, you know, again, you would do this if you were, you know, trying to figure out what you wanted to wear or if you're hanging things up just uh, as you're putting laundry away and you know setting it up so that you can hang it. Uh, Michelle really likes these hangers. I forget where she got these from. I don't think they have a brand on them. So we'll have to chase some hangers, chase some lights, uh, chase other accessories for the closet. So the other thing I'm gonna do next is drawer, you know, drawer organization would be nice to have like jewelry. So you could do jewelry organization, and maybe, um, you know, and also some dividers and things like that. So you could divide out your, your uh, socks and underwear and all that kind of crap. My side actually turned out really well. I, I, I'm surprised. I thought for sure I would have screwed something up. The only thing I screwed up was this side I made a little bit long somehow. I must have just measured incorrectly, uh, which we were able to solve by just removing a half inch piece of drywall. Uh, when the painters come, they're gonna caulk and paint and fill all the, you know, all the holes and fill, you know, caulk around the baseboards that we trimmed up. But I think the way to do it for sure, trim your baseboards or pull the baseboards, that's really easy. Uh, we're gonna make a how-to video here after I finish this one up. But uh, having things like, like just just the way the designer set up. So the good news is our guys, Kyle and Chris, or uh, Kyle and Sean and Ed and whoever else we hire to help us with this through Destination Plus Garage, we're gonna be able to design this stuff for people really, really easily. And then mounting to the wall, it just makes it so darn sturdy. It's really incredible. But I like how my side turned out. Uh, I actually was a little you know, disappointed that I designed it where I had hang here and hang there, but it actually worked out well because my t-shirts here, have my suits back there. Um, and then, you know, have my laundry. So dirty laundry, whites and darks. Uh, and then I'm using this top as my, like, I will usually wear something before I go to sleep and I'll usually prep like gym clothes. And so I'll have that here. And, uh, I guess I've been extra for something else. Uh, but yeah, this closet just turned out really, really great. I like carpet in a closet. Uh, I'm wearing shoes now, but we clean the shoes. I don't wear shoes in the house generally. We clean their shoes because we're filming and we're videoing and we're in and out of the, you know, of the garage and working with tools and stuff. But normally I'd have, you know, house shoes on or no shoes at all. And so I like the comfort of carpet in a closet, uh, but you could certainly do this on hardwood or something like that as well. But, you know, I've been chasing closets for a long time and uh, haven't found anything that I really like this. You know, I, I wouldn't be, uh, I had no interest in selling closets, but when I found this and my gear started turning, like if this is as good as I think it is, then, then there's a possibility of me being able to sell this stuff. So let me go show you the other two closets that we did so you can get a, a frame of reference and uh, we'll wrap this video up. 
So this is my son's closet, Ryan's closet. Uh, we, um, I did capture some footage of this. If you want to go watch the last moving vlog or look at, it's called the uh, moving again, dot, 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 closets. This closets, uh, driveway and poop geyser. So you can go <laughs> search that video if this, this video will live, uh, live a long time. Uh, but we did, uh, I did some storage here for shoes for him. So a shelf. Now notice here I did, because they sell this in 18 and 14 inches deep. And I knew this corner would be tight and I wanted to be able to access the hang. And so instead of doing 18 inches deep, I did 14 inches deep on this section, but the rest of the stuff is, is 18. So he has a 36 inch wide set of drawers and soft clothes like all the others. Uh, he, I did an 18 inch hamper. So the 18 inch hamper has a dual compartment when she's keeping the shoelaces in. Uh, and uh, it's just the hamper was back ordered. So I'm, I'm waiting on that. Should be here next week, I think. Uh, but his closet setup turned out great. So he's got room to store his crep protect cases and his, uh, his Jordans and shoes. And um, the, um, the, you know, the, he, he doesn't need as much hang. So we made a, a smaller hang section and I made a larger shoe, shoe section for him. Um, but, uh, and also set it up to where he has his belts hanging and has the ability to, you know, hang a towel or something like that. He's got his robe hanging there. So his closet turned out great. This is the same silver color, uh, but, or a gray color. Let me show you, uh, we finished the guest room. The guest room is the, uh, is the sort of white silver, which is really cool. So this closet, I uh, I cut uh, a couple of the hangs. So I'll have hang a hang here. Uh, we put our you know we put our tool our our, um, our clothes hanger here. I put a belt loop here. This closet I designed a little differently because uh, this would be the guest room, uh, and but I still wanted it for. I don't do much for resale, but for resale, I wanted some hanging in here, but really we need this to store all of Kate's toys. And so I made this one very shelf heavy and then did a, a narrower. So this is a 30 inch wide drawer set. And then this is in that sort of white silver color. I'm not sure, sure how it's coming across on camera, but this color is really, really nice. Like uh, I said earlier in the video, this is bordering right on the edge of grandma spec but it's just just past grandma spec to make it really cool. So it's like right on that edge of grandma and really, really cool. And I think it, uh, uh, this color, I think will probably become the most popular. It has a like kind of silver, you know, I don't know, there's like a little bit of brown in it. Uh, but this color is really, really cool. Let's see if we can get it a little better out here in the light, just to kind of give you a frame of reference for what the color looks like. Pretty neat. I like this color. I think for most people, they'd you know choose the gray or the silver, but that may end up being a little dark. It does, you know, the silver, the darker silver makes the room feel a little bit smaller. Um, but this closet turned out great too. I did the same thing here. Notice, I knew this corner was going to be tight, and so I designed it where I did this 14 inches deep, and then bumped it out to 18 inch here for so that we could get our you know, deeper drawers, and then. This one, like on Michelle's side, I did a five drawer instead of a four drawer. So for Ryan and me, we don't need as many drawers. And so I did wider, taller drawers. I did the four drawer version. But I think this is another nice option as well to do the five drawer where it sits up a little taller and, um, and you get that little bit of extra storage space. Like if you had jewelry and stuff like that, but you can see how nice the, the lined drawers are same hardware I'm doing it here. So I'm doing top knobs. I forget the, the version. Maybe I'll put it in the description for you. I forget the exact version. It's called like Novello 3 or something. Nova 3 or something like that is the version of top knobs that I'm doing. But yeah, that's awesome. That's a wrap on our on our closet setup. We're going to finish uh, Kate's here now and uh, do a step by step by step on you know how, what we learned and how to do it. So if you bought these closets, uh, by the way, I did this whole thing without Mike, so um, you don't. If I can do it, you know, chances are most of you can do it. But certainly, if I can do it, then you can hire like a handyman level. Like I don't think you need a cabinet manufacturer or a cabinet, uh, a carpenter to install this stuff. Just somebody who knows how to use a screw, uh, a drill, 
knows how to use some shims to get it flush. And shoot, if your walls are straight, you don't even need to shim it. It's just the walls in this house are pretty wonky. And maybe use a multi-tool. We're gonna create a package of the tools that you need for this. And uh, also, uh, like I said, the tutorial video would be really, really helpful. So thanks for watching. Obsessed Closet Systems, or whatever the heck we're gonna call it, is coming soon. It's, uh, it's really that good. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.